Live your life, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Conspiracy Farm, where we don't start the conspiracies, we just add the water. And now, your host of the most state-of-the-art, most informed podcast on the interweb, I present to you, Pat Militage and Jeffrey Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for war? Yeah, rear naked choke of Cocker Spaniel, bro. You don't yeah, change, change the neighborhood up. Conspiracy Farm, go. Check it out. All right, launch time for another episode of the Conspiracy Farm. As always, I'm joined by my co-host Jeffrey Wilson. How you doing, Jeffrey? Well, I am just living in lockdown. You know, enjoying the day, enjoying a little Pilsner Urkel, a little Czech beer, and uh, making some chicken tacos later. A six pack and a podcast. All right, here we go. So, listen, hey, I I really wanted to get this guy on because I've been following him on Twitter quite a bit, and he's he's unapologetic, uh, self described unapologetic. And he, he's, yeah, he's, he's brash. He's um, abrasive at times on Twitter. He deliberately pisses people off, which I like a lot because you know how I am. Uh, he has his own podcast, and it's, it's after his own name, and I'll let you know his name in a second. But some of his episodes, the names of your episodes, I will say, are, are pretty good because it's Lessons from History, uh, Believing in Monsters, Lessons from History, The Little Brothers of World War I, Medal of Honor Monday, uh, yeah. Living like a lunatic, and so on. So he's got uh, "Revenge of the Sea Urchin" as as one of the names of his uh, <laughs> episodes, which is pretty cool, man. I I I gotta say, it's very creative. So Jesse Kelly, uh, the host of the Jesse Kelly Show, thank you for for coming on the Conspiracy Farm. No, I'm I'm honored. I love you guys. Love what you do, man. I appreciate you all having me. And I'd shoot, Pat, I've been watching you punch people in the face for years, so it's a big honor for me. Mm-hmm. So. I would say this. Um, I mean, how how long ago was it that you learned I was a, a psycho conservative? Uh, it actually was not that long at all. I would guess three or four weeks. And it's just it's so funny how this world works, how small it ends up getting. And I and I I, I, I told you that when we were going back and forth setting this thing up. I, I seriously, when I was shoot, I was in college, and I used to. I mean, you were one of my favorites. I used to watch all the time, and just haven't thought about it in a long time. And you reached out, said you want to come on my show. I went home that night, told my wife, I'm like, you're not going to believe he wants me to come on with him. So, yeah, it awesome. was very cool. That's great. That's great. And so, you know, look, um, for the most part, you follow kind of the same thought processes uh, that we do. We're, you know, constitutional conservatives. And uh, but, you know, where we may differ in some things, and certainly you and Jeff may differ, is in maybe – um, unabrashed support for maybe Donald Trump. Um, you know, Jeffrey kind of sees across political lines a little more than most, um, holds everyone in account, as I do, and I'm sure you do. Uh, but but more than anything, I think, you know, the uh, Jeff's a little more skeptical that Donald Trump might be the white hat that he claims he is. And so, you know, go down kind of your thought processes on what you're seeing of late and analyze that a little bit for us just in broad brush strokes and then we can dive into you know each particular whether it's the financial sector um covid-19 itself uh you know the deep state uh, world health organization all these different players that have that have been involved in this whole mess well as far as trump goes I, let me just clarify I, I i voted for him i was super anti trump in the primary i was a hardcore ted cruz guy uh, obviously, Ted Cruz got his doors blown off, voted for Trump in the general. I assumed he was going to be a really crappy president. I have been blown away by how good he has been as far as the things I actually care about. He's been dynamite. So, so look, I'm voting for him again. I think he's been dynamite. That's just bottom line. Uh, I think that this entire COVID-19 disaster is one of the worst handled things I've ever seen in my entire life. And that goes federal, state, local, worldwide. I, I, I'm I'm still stunned, literally stunned at what I see. And I know, Pat, you probably don't disagree, but I don't know, Jeff maybe does. I, I'm, I'm floored that it was ever even considered to lock down an entire nation. I've never seen this. You guys know I, I, I'm big on history. 
I've seen cities quarantined. I've seen vulnerable people quarantined. They actually built a wall around Marseille at one point in the 1700s when the plague broke out. But no nation has ever quarantined the whole nation because it's freaking insane. I've never seen anything like this. We're killing ourselves for a virus. If it was the Black Plague, it still wouldn't be worth what we're doing right now. I think it is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And all the smart people seem to have agreed that it's the only way to go. So there it is. <laughs> they call themselves smart yeah. people. Pseudo-intellectuals, yeah. I believe we call them, yeah. Right. Go ahead, Jeffrey. No, I mean, I, I it is crazy. You know what I mean? That um, it, This is quite unprecedented that we've seen in or what we've seen and it just for me it just i never really just invest too much energy to to one person necessarily one political party because i think it's a chess game and from the when the standpoint of geo from the standpoint of geopolitics it just it transcends right left what we're dealing with right now transcends right left i mean the guy almost within a week make bernie sanders look like fucking barry goldwater you know what i mean it just it, and when people say, you know people are still waiting like oh this white hat i mean i I get it, man, and that's a testament to people's humanity, but at the end of the day, it's not like Donald Trump's the janitor at the White House just sweeping up shit. He's the president. This notion that he is not in any way, um, I wouldn't say culpable, but, I mean, he, he is the president. So, so much dictating of this, what's happening. I mean, it, 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 well, and again, I don't even think he's maybe not even dictating because I think presidents are always, they're selected, not elected, and they're always higher people at the top kind of pu puppet mastering, if you will, really running the show. So, like I said, I never give too much credence to necessarily any one person as this cult of personality, and that's what I think we've seen with Trump. And it's, in my opinion, the same with Obama, that cult of personality just swung to the right. He presented himself to be X, Y, Z, but then not only not does a lot of his actions not say that and dictate that or reflect that, but the people he surrounded himself with. I'm going to drain the swamp, so, but then I'm going to surround myself with the swamp. So, I don't know. Where are, so, let's... Let's go through some of the people that he's surrounded with right now, <clears throat> including Fauci, including Barr. Talk about a little bit of their of their history. Well, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, Barr, I mean, yeah, he goes back, you know, to Iran-Contra, et cetera. Um, for, for me, what's going on now, and Pat, you lamented, and so many people have said, you know, Trump's going to take down the Fed. And I'm not an economist. I'm not super smart. Literally, I'm just kind of a historian that just looks at patterns and see who people surround themselves with, et cetera. You know, when, when Trump announced, you know, the whole Fed issue, he appointed the company called BlackRock um, to basically kind of be the investment banker for the for the U.S., and the U.S. Treasury, et cetera. I mean, it just go into BlackRock. That's just dubious. That's swamp all day. So, I mean, again, just people I don't think do their necessarily diligent research. And, I, you know, I could be off on some of this. But again, you know, birds of a feather flock together, whatever you want to call it. When you start looking at individuals like Wilbur Ross or, or Larry Fink or, you know, Stanley Fisher, you know, he's the vice chairman of BlackRock, but he used to be the vice chairman of the Federal Reserve or uh, he was the former chief economist at the World Bank. I mean, this is this is swamp people, man. This is the people who've gone around and collapsed economies throughout the world. And, you know, and it's just continuing. So it just and I could be wrong again. But I just get frustrated when people put too much emphasis into a single individual, single policy, single administration, and then are blind, if you will, to some of the larger stuff that really is kind of contrary to why they signed on to the person. Right. So, Jesse, let me let me ask you real quick. I mean, my thoughts are with considering injecting again after the irresponsible and moronic QE programs after the 2008 housing collapse, uh, they blew the bubbles up so big. Uh, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the the global banks um, all needed their their injection of digital currency. Of course, um, the balloons, uh, the bubbles got blown up massively, and they were going to burst. They were set to burst. Many experts, uh, people that I were to, I was talking to, expected the stock market to collapse this spring, as it has. Unbeknownst to us, we certainly didn't expect it to be camouflaged with a global pandemic. Um, but now they're doing the same thing. Even they're doubling down six to ten trillion dollars in a few weeks time injected into the economy. This is going to cause hyperinflation, most likely. Um, I think in my mind, and I want to get your feelings on this, the only way that Trump writes the ship on this is if he kills the Fed and creates a gold backed treasury note and we start all over again. Well, which he won't do. I mean, you may be right about that, but yeah, he won't do it. The truth of the matter is, well, I said Trump did a lot of things that I agree with. The truth of the matter is Trump and I are a million miles apart on spending. <laughs> he has never viewed spending or deficits or debt as being anything bad. He just has not. 
he doesn't think twice before printing two trillion dollars that we don't have and just handing out another two trillion. They're already talking about another two trillion on infrastructure. And the truth of the matter is, I mean, back to what Pat was saying as well, we have this now we have this council that he's announced, this open business again council. <laughs> and I went through this today on my radio show. And look, those people may be fine people. I don't know any of them personally, but every single one of those people to a man is a Washington, D.C. or New York City corridor millionaire wired in with politics or wired into the banking sector. That is not what we need right now. The, the whole problem we have with this entire idiotic shutdown is that it's all the politicians and all the pundits that live, work, and worship in D.C. and New York telling everyone else to shut up and go home while normal Americans are starving to death and waiting in the unemployment line. Right. And so to solve that problem, we're going to get more people from D.C. and New York City to get to join together and tell the small business owner what he needs. The small business owner doesn't need some jerk off loan from the federal government that's going to get there two months after he's bankrupt. He needs right. to be allowed to open up a store again. And until that, this is all just moving around the deck chairs on the Titanic. Yeah, exactly. Well, in mean, well, the meantime, the banks and the corporations are just given trillions no vote on it no loan they're just giving it i mean and, and going oh, back and going going back to blackrock man the head of blackrock the guy larry fink he's the one who pretty much developed the notion or the instrument the final instrument of the mortgage-backed security which was such a huge part of the 2008 meltdown along with collateralized debt obligations derivatives etc he was pretty much the father of that and so who does the government contract to bring in after that whole thing happens to clean it up <laughs> fucking blackrock dude I mean, it's painful. And again, you, you look at a lot of these guys, not just Stanley Fisher, like I mentioned, Wilbur Ross. You got the ambassador to Italy, fucking Louis Eisenberg, former Goldman Sachs. I mean, he just surrounded himself with swamp people, dude. And it's just so painfully obvious, and it just frustrates the shit out of me. The people that still well, double I mean, down on the cult of personality. Same with Obama, dude. Well, I, I'm going to be this and this, but he surrounded himself with swamp people. Well, I, I, look, the, the bottom line is people, too many people in politics on both sides. And look, I like Trump, like I said, but people wear his pajamas. <clears throat> people wear Barack Obama's pajamas. I think it's a bad look for any human being, let alone any man, to wear another man's pajamas. For real. I, that's just, it's, just, yep. it's a bad look when you're waving somebody's pom-poms because he's just a dude. That's, <laughs> he's, he's just a dude. He's going to be gone. He's going to be gone in a year. He's going to be gone. Four years, he's just a dude. He's not. He's not a god king. And and when people think about it like that, they 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 go way off base. But you bring up these banks and and these big corporations. I have argued repeatedly that what we're witnessing right now is not just the death of small business. We're witnessing the transfer of wealth from the middle class to the big swamp creatures because now, as you line up every not, small not business some of it, on the side all of the of dish. It. Yeah. As you line up every small business on the side of the dish and you fire a bullet into the back of their head, the big corporations are going to gobble that up. We're going to have mega corporations. Now Google and Amazon are going to run every daggone thing. Well, and then and, and how many more of these companies are going to be nationalized by the government and just bought up? And the, and the more and more mm -hmm. that this new Federal Reserve, whatever you want to call it, is just buying up, buying up, buying up. I mean, it's... I don't. I mean, I hate to use words like you know, communist takeover, fat. I mean, but this is just so bad. I mean, and look at what's happening. You know, by definition, when when corporations meld with with politics and the government, I mean, you have fascism. And in my opinion, that's been around actually for a long time. But we're seeing it more naked than been ever. Around for a long time. Well, let me add, and let me ask both of you guys. And I don't mean this to do like a because I'm not an Obama guy. As I just said, what if this happened? What's going on right now when Obama was president? With, with all the lore and the understanding that he might have been a communist or whatever, and then he basically goes brazen communist. Trump, at least, was like, this will never be a communist country. And then, like I said, he rounds around and you know basically gives Bernie the election without really being Bernie. What are your thoughts on that? If Obama was in office and this happened? Uh, I, I Look, I will tell you, I would have lost my mind because I thought Obama was an absolute nut job and one of, if not the worst presidents we've ever had. But again, I, uh, at least I can claim I'm not a hypocrite because I spent the last month losing my mind under Trump, too. I'd be freaking out just as bad. What has, 
What has bothered me is not, and, and this this is just, I mean, you guys, I'm sure, probably look at this differently than I do. It is not weird to be out in the least to watch people on the left cheerlead for, for all this temporary, you know, dictatorship crap we have going on right now. That's who they are. I expect that out of them. What shocks me is so many people I know personally, friends of mine, who have spent their entire lives talking about liberty and the Constitution and limited government and America and land of the free and the second a freaking virus breaks out, it's please, daddy government, lock Bruh, me under my bed. It's, my I'm, dude. I'm stunned. I can't believe it. You, met, you had a tweet the other day, uh, something to that effect, uh, conservatives in 2019. Do you remember that one? And then conservatives in 2020, can I go outside? Fucking right, dude. It's true. <laughs> Fucking it's right. True. That that it's true. That was the tweet. I said, I mean, and, and honestly, it's disappointing me, man. Their whole lives it's been don't tread on me. And now it's just begging government permission to open your business again. Whoa! Dude, go screw your Dude, yourself. and that's what I said the other day, man. You know, and I'm not taking a side on this, but what triggered people, Colin Kaepernick takes a knee disrespecting the flag, which is the symbol of the rights we're talking about, and people are burning fucking jerseys. The moment the actual rights are starting to be eroded and taken away. Not to say it's crickets, because as we're finding out, it's not crickets. But, you know, not everybody's keeping that same energy. Oh, man, 100%. <laughs> You're right, 100%. Look, all you have to do, I mean, this is just the truth of the matter. I don't want to be too cynical on it. All you have to do is scare people, man. And every yeah. every single government, especially every tyrannical government, which they all are on some level, every tyrannical government in history has known that. That all you have to do is scare them, and they'll yeah. let you do whatever they want to you. Well, and when we get into like, I mean, I don't know how far, whatever, the larger government that I think does run everything, shadow government, deep state, whatever you want to call them, and Illuminati, I mean, if you know their names, they're not really, whatever. It's, it's um, that, that fear-based, that fear-based conditioning that they continue to use. And like you said, this goes back a long ways. And I was just talking to my friend the other day, how they've refined it. They have refined that fear-based conditioning. And they know... And even like right now with our phones and all of our digital metrics, they, they can predict our behavior. And so now, they, again, they've refined this art. And look at everybody, man. It's people are snitching on people, you know, getting people's businesses closed. Like Karen is like everywhere on her cell phone. Dude, I was at the grocery store today. <laughs> I was at the grocery store today with my daughter. And there was a huge line, six feet apart or whatever. And I just happened to need something in that aisle. Dude, this old lady Ooh, she didn't like me being there, not six feet apart. She had her mask on. Dude, she was looked like she was about ready to slit my throat. Like, she just stared at me, and my daughter was like, um, Dad, this lady is just staring at you. Because, I mean, everyone's kind of bought, not that corona's not real and people aren't dying, but as everyone's starting to find out, do not pay attention to the man behind the curtain. There is some serious, serious shenanigans and bullshittery going on right now. The numbers aren't adding up. People are having to stay home, lose their jobs. Like you just said, it's not only just a, it's a collapse of small business. Some of these businesses will not come back. So many of these old school restaurants or mom and pops were already struggling. Now it's a wrap. It's a, it's an assault. It's an assault on the middle class. It's, an, you know, it's, it's crazy what's going on right now. And to me, it does translate right, left. You can like Trump all you want or whatever, or Biden or whatever, but this is affecting everybody from every political spectrum. All freedoms are being taken. Yes, yes. Well, I, look, I mean, in these restaurants you brought up, restaurants run on 5 to 10% margins. I mean, people have this, and this is part of the problem as well, people have this misconception about the economy and businesses and how those things actually work. That mom and pop restaurant you brought up, those people are not rich. Those people probably don't bring in 40, 50 grand a year. They're, yeah. They don't have any money. Restaurants don't bring in margins like that. And you, you drop their revenues to zero or close to zero for a month, that's the fat lady singing, man. That's yeah. all she wrote. It's over. And imagine how many of those are. I mean, all of this, bro. I mean, well, a long, long time good. restaurant in downtown Baton Rouge already closed the stores. There's going to be more. They're going to they're, they're going to be boarding up shops, restaurants, stores all over the nation. We are looking at 45 percent default on mortgages, 45 percent uh, unemployment. Uh, I mean, Great Depression Numbers. level yeah. unemployment. We are, we are, this is lunacy. Uh, it's been deliberately done uh, without a doubt. Whether, whether this, and Jesse, you give us your feedback on this, but whether this virus was lab created, which we know um, we've got bioweapons labs and so do other developed nations that can create viruses that can attack specific DNA, meaning I can specifically kill Chinese. I can specifically kill people in North Africa. 
uh, with a specific virus that I've created in a laboratory, whether it was lab created or came from bat soup, as uh, <laughs> mainstream media tried to portray. Either way, this is being used as cover for that financial collapse that we expected to happen this spring anyway. Most Americans were not paying attention. This was going to happen. But now we are literally looking at um, something that makes the Great Depression look like a, a walk in the park. No, we are. And, and, and yeah, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It, it's I, I want people to understand that. And I, I, I'm sure a lot of your fans will that this is not something that we've seen before. I mean, people keep making these comparisons to, you know, well, this is very similar to the Great Recession of 2007 and 2008. People, if you are alive today, you have never seen the government line up an entire nation and shut it down yeah, on right. purpose. Yeah. I mean, you don't get me wrong. People get policies wrong. Some side will pass some law that's horrible. Wars break out. All kinds of things happen that can hurt an economy. But never do you see a government point their finger at businesses and individuals and say, go home and stop making money and stop the economic engine from running. It just does not happen. And look, I am not actually, I understand this is the Conspiracy Farm podcast, <laughs> but I am not generally, well, I'm just not generally a big conspiracy theory guy. But this is one of those things, it is so bizarre. What I'm seeing is so out of left field and so completely illogical that I, I, I tell you, I have a bunch of my own swimming through my head. Oh, boy, is there somebody <laughs> behind the scenes here? Because this is this is nutball, man. I mean, like you said, whether this was an accidental virus or on purpose, you can blame China all you want. And, yeah, a lot of this is obviously China's fault. But China did not point their finger at our businesses and make them close. We yeah, did that. Precisely. Precisely. Well, and that's another point. That's another point that's very important to bring up is everywhere I turn and look, and I'm sure anybody that's listening to this and both of you guys will recognize that from our politicians to our media to, to uh, World Health Organization people who, well, the WHO is getting thrown under the bus right now because fired. I, I think they completely sided with China's bullshit stories. But in the end, the media is literally fomenting war against China at every turn saying that this is absolutely 100% China's fault. Now, listen, I'm not discounting that China played a part in this, but what I am saying is, is that there were a lot of other people in the Western world who were globalist bankers and controllers and billionaires who had a lot to gain from paying a scientist from Harvard, exactly. a professor, to go back and forth from Wuhan University who ended up getting arrested with three scientists from Wuhan University with biomaterial on his person. Uh, look, this is, uh, if, if that guy is uh, the professor that I envision, a guy who lived his life um, in the pearly gates looking, his vision of the world is looking out of an Ivy League school uh, library window, um, he's going to be easy to break. It's not like... It's not like torturing and interrogating a Navy SEAL. This guy is going to get <laughs> one toothpick under his fucking fingernail, and he's going to spill yes. the beans on whoever paid him to do this. So I'm thinking he's, he's singing like a bird, and so are the Chinese, and we're going to find out who funded this thing if it was lab-created. And in, in, in piggybacking on that, before you answer, sir, I mean, our, our understanding of how – this was a lot of people knew about this. Not only just knew about this, but they kind of war gamed it. Event two hundred one with the Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates Foundation, the World Economic Forum, um, and you know, not a lot of not a lot of people know this, but essentially the equivalency of the Chinese CDC was present at the the um, the event two hundred one. And I'm just hearing right. more and more on how this was almost not planned together, because of course we never want to think about that but it just again when i say it goes beyond individual politics or party or president there's just more going on here than than what it appears what are your thoughts on you know these these war games that were happening event 201 you know bill gates producing the pandemic docu series on netflix weeks and months before this happened and then resigns from you know his companies as this plays out any thoughts on the possible foreknowledge of this or you know this being a possible false flag 
Yeah, I think it's freaking weird. I, I, I mean, I did look. Obviously, we know the pandemic is real. We, we know yes. it's a real virus. Yes. What we do not know, and look, look, the truth is this: we may not ever know because we're dealing with a communist re communist regime in China that's very secretive. We don't know whether this came from some guy eating raw bat soup or from a bio lab over there. But we know Jesse, they have. Let me stop you there, Jesse. I've got to stop you there. If you mention German Shepherd soup again. <laughs> Look, dude, the picture, I've already said this on my podcast before, but, you know, the first images and the first narrative was a bowl of soup with a German shepherd sized bat hanging out of it. And that was to blame for COVID-19. And I went, it's this, this is, it's, it's pathetic. The, the media is so pathetic and the American people are so pathetic to believe that shit that it's it's beyond belief, dude. Now, yes, there have been, you know, the swine flu that ends up getting transferred from animals to humans. But let's be honest here. This this whole thing stinks to high heaven, considering the Harvard professor and the scientists from Wuhan University being arrested by our people. And don't for, do not forget, Dianne Feinstein, a senator from the most powerful state in the union, had a Chinese spy as her driver for something like 20 years. 20 years. Like, 20 years. <laughs> On top of the fact, we know this for a fact. This is not, this is not you know, backroom back room internet jargon, jargon. This is a fact. China views their war with us as a soft, stealth war. We know for a fact they are inside of us all over the place. They have spies all over. Those are just the ones they've caught. And there are 100 out there for every one you've caught. That's sure. one. Two, yeah. when it comes to the Bill Gates thing, I don't know anything about Bill Gates other than the Microsoft stuff, but you can't tell me it's not a little weird when the richest man in the world says that America has to remain locked down for yeah. 14 to 18 months until we have a vaccine, which he personally is going to oversee producing, and then it's also going to have something to where they can track you once you take it. That is honestly some of the most Orwellian bullcrap I've ever heard of in my entire life. Well, and it, and it, and it begins, the more we learn about it, it just goes further and further away from this conspiracy theory. And then when you understand this Harvard uh, professor who was arrested, what he was working in, the specific stuff that you're talking about with Bill Gates, this nanobiometric type vaccine, it's staring us right in the face, man. It's totally staring us right in the face. And it's, it, Pat said it, so many people are starting to catch on. How long are, and I don't advocate violence, and I'm not saying this, from, I'm saying this from information and an understanding. Not on air, you don't advocate. Oh, violence. shut up. I don't. You know, I, I'm not even <laughs> talking about that. But I'm saying it's how long are we going to allow these basic human rights of life, liberty, pursuit? I mean, when you see a fucking father getting arrested, doing T ball with his six year old daughter. Right. When you, I mean, it's just, and we could just sit here and list all these different inferences. And, you know, the guy getting pulled off of the, the bus for not wearing a mask, I think it was. In Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. I mean, this is right. this is this is beyond Orwellian, bro. And think about it. This happened within a month, a few weeks. And I'm not even trying to cast aspersions like you were saying, because I give Pat shit all the time or any of the Patriots. Like, you know, the reason for the Second Amendment is to not only protect our families, but protect against a tyrannical government. And again, I'm not advocating violence, but I'm like, where the what the fuck are you waiting for? Now, I'm not just saying about now, because, this, you know, the history is festooned with this government being tyrannical in our name. I love this country. This is the best country in the freaking world. But our government has it's, done stuff it's, in it's our name. It's quickly deteriorating, though. Well, and, and, they, and they have for a very long time, again, done stuff in our name, which is completely the antithetical or the antithesis of what we're supposed to be representing. And like you said, I just hate that intellectual and, and dishonesty. While, Talking about it, but don't be about it, you know? Right, but and while, and while our media and politicians slam China for their authoritarian techniques and tactics, imprisoning people, uh, monitoring people, you know, this and that. Our government continues to do the same thing as the just mentioned, uh, breaking up church congregations. Meanwhile, thousands flock into Walmart, Target, uh, grocery stores across the country, but people couldn't gather, and this is all Jeffrey, on the, by the way, um, <laughs> Jeffrey, because you might not remember what you said to me earlier today. The government, the government stopped 
Americans from gathering on one of the most, if not the most holy days, Easter Sunday when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Americans couldn't go to church. But they're going to open government back up at the end of April on what day, Jeffrey? May 1st. May Day, baby. May Which Day. Is? The communist holiday. Which is just another slap in the that. fucking face, man. And again, like how many rights, you know, the freedom of assembly, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion. They're just like destroying them in front of our face for what Dr. Fauci wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine a month ago, a hyped up flu. Right. Prayers and condolences to anybody who's been affected by this medically, family members. But just like the report from Bloomberg News, not that I'm a fan of Bloomberg, 99% of those people who died have died from underlying conditions. And as we've heard from Deborah Burke, Crazy. or whatever her name is, yes. from the... From the podium, yeah, we're just going to add coronavirus. If you died of pneumonia, heart attack, coronary heart disease, yeah, we're just going to basically say it's corona if you're corona positive, which is just horseshit. And it's just well, used- it gets it, it, it gets worse than that. The New York Times just yeah. came of all of all places. New York Times just came out tonight and said, I mean, they open they they said it openly. Here, I'll read. I'll actually read you the exact headline from it. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Breaking news, New York City's coronavirus death toll soared past 10,000 after officials added more than 3,700 people who had never tested positive for the virus but were <laughs> presumed to have died from it. I'm not joking. That's no, not that's, I saw it. I saw that. And it's, again, it's not even fucking hidden, dude. They're just fucking so, lying so to now you. Let's hypothesize. let's hypothesize why they would run up the numbers. Is it because they'll get more federal funding, state funding? It's a part of it. Uh, is it because is it because they want to run Trump out of office? Um, is it because they want to scare us more, or all the above? Well, look. The bottom line is, I think I have, look. I have my own theories on it, and I actually think it goes to a couple things you just said. One. Nobody running up the numbers right now is missing a paycheck. Nobody pushing the pandemic <laughs> angle is missing a paycheck. We have politicians who are drunk on more power than they've ever had before in their lives. We have media people who've never missed a paycheck. They're sitting at home getting even fatter than they already are in their pajamas, cranking out their articles from the comfort of their homes. <laughs> we have all we have doctors who aren't missing a paycheck, advisors who aren't missing a paycheck. And so they're highly invested in blowing it up. But you mentioned sinking Trump's presidency. And look, you can't absolve him from this because he opened up that road. But the truth is, I think as soon as he opened up the road and agreed with those doctors and said locking down is what we have to do, I think all these Democrat governors realized, man, this guy's greatest presidential accomplishment that's going to get him reelected is the economy. And he just gave me full power to completely screw him on that. And no one's going to blame me for it. And now Bill Maher himself, Bill Maher himself on his show said, I am all for the economy imploding and people losing their jobs as long as Trump gets pushed out of office. Bill Maher mm -hmm. himself, right? And yes, that's the way do. these people think. So all, all those on the left um, who feel that that, that was the, uh, the wish, look, <clears throat> you're, you're culpable in all of this. You, you, you are absolutely in lockstep with some 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 fucking assholes sorry for my language um you know that wished this upon america a again this goes beyond right left guys and when they hit us with the digital currency they're going to be fucking tracking democrats just as well as they are republicans let me ask you my friend jesse um in in pursuit of whatever coronavirus apparently the department of justice needs to expand their arrest powers and in addition to the National Defense Authorization Act that Trump reauthorized, which allows for the indefinite detention of Americans, assassination of Americans, propaganda on U.S. citizens. Why? Why is the Department of Justice now needing to expand their powers to arrest people and is suspending the writ of habeas corpus? Well, because that's what government does. <laughs> look, I have no, I have no better reason, I have no better explanation than that. And that, look, it's just, it's just like I just said, they are all getting off on this newfound power. And look, the truth of the matter is this: we all wanted, or at least I should say, especially Trump's hardcore supporters, they want Trump to be something he's not. 
You want to imagine that Trump is draining the swamp. Well, look, as much as I enjoy it, Trump having a press conference where he slaps around a bunch of idiots in the press corps is not draining the swamp. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. just not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not draining the swamp. Tell me one person from the federal government, even from the Obama administration, who's seen jail time. Not a single person has yeah. seen jail time. And you can do talk about all this new bar investigation all you want, and they found Brennan on this, and they had Comey on that. Here's the fact, and nobody wants to talk about this. The fact of the matter is President Barack Obama instructed or at least was informed by the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation to use the FBI's powers to open up an illegal warrant to spy on his presidential opponent. That right. is banana republic stuff. They should be burying Barack Obama under Fort Leavenworth with James Comey and Brennan and all the rest of them right next to it. And you know what's amazing? Not one of those guys will even get a slap on the wrist. As far as I know, Barack Obama has not even been asked about it one time. That is how little the swamp has been drained nothing gets drained all that matters is the people in power keep on keeping well and that's what i'm saying oh, how's that any different back. than the patriot act you know you can spy on americans you can you know ndaa that's where it started the national defense authorization act and all the emergency powers have been re-signed by every president since bush how's that any different i mean yeah it's, it's all banana it's, republic it's, and it's not been any different it, it's not any different but let's not act like it started with the patriot act and by the way i can't of believe not. they just agreed to go ahead and resign all this i mean you can go clear back to the days of lincoln who just decided well screw it we're just gonna have yes. a war over it and <laughs> habeas corpus is suspended yes i sir. mean this is just something that this is what governments do man it's what governments do so keep buying ammo so if the south <laughs> rises if, uh, uh, jesse buying. jesse if if the south rises again are you with them <laughs> Well, there ain't no south to rise, man. That's not how it works now. We're south not divided north and south. Well, <laughs> hold on now. No, hold on. Hold on. We actually could be because places like uh, the state of Texas and even the University of Texas have massive uh, multi-billion dollar deposits of gold, which they are ready to transfer into their own monetary system in the event that the United States falls apart. So, my friend, I'll ask you again. <laughs> are you ready to join the South when it rises again? Well, I moved to Texas on purpose, brother. I ain't going anywhere, whether we break up or not. <laughs> hey, Jesse. <laughs> you got to understand this. Look, look and, and I wrote an article about this, and people got so mad. America is going to break up. And I had so many of my friends yell at me and say, that should you can't say that. That's anti-patriotism. Man, that's the history of the world. Balkanized. Look at a map of the world in the year zero, then look at it in the year 500, then 1,000, then yeah. 1,500. Countries rise, countries fall, countries go away, countries break up. That it, Whether that's 50 years from now or five years from now or 100 years from now or 1,000 years from now, we are breaking up. It's just a matter of how. What, Balkanization, man. Look what happened, happened to Yugoslavia and that whole Bosnian war, which preceded Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And that's just that's just. I know, I know that all too well. No, I, yeah. I just as I say, it's uh, it's it, it is definitely their strategy. Um, so so ultimately, let's let's go back to the the villa, uh, vilifying of China, the media, our politicians, everyone else. Look, this was the same playbook: um, embargoes against Japan in World War II. Um, vilifying Japan, financial vilif vilification. Uh, Putting them we're in looking concentration at camps. Something, we're looking at something even bigger than, than financial. Uh, they took a lot of American lives and American lives if uh, the media and our politicians are correct in blaming them 100% for hiding the, well, the outbreak and the severity of it. Right? So are we looking at a repeat of history that's happened so many times where the citizens of a nation look at their own politicians with, well, saliva pouring out of their mouths and uh, knives in their hands, and the politicians and the media turn the citizens to anger for the purpose of... Say it again. Say that, that last part again, champ. You broke up. Are we dealing with a situation where the media has constantly, I mean, it's obvious, been blaming China for all of this? That it was, it was, a, it could have been a Wuhan lab or just the Chinese government lying about it. 
and allowing and deliberately um, allowing Chinese businessmen who were infected to spread it around the world deliberately to cause economic impact and implosion mm -hmm. around the world. These are the words uh, to get citizens who were angry at their own government, which we're all angry at our own government, I hope, <laughs> um, and change and channel that anger towards a foreign state, i.e. China, to foment war, is what I'm saying. Well, I don't know. I've, I hadn't really thought about it in that way, but the well, truth is... Financial, there's a, there's... Look, fin I'll just... I'll, sorry to interrupt, but financial implosions are always followed by cataclysmic friggin' warfare, right? Well, there's an old saying that's older than anybody on this podcast, that when goods stop crossing borders, armies will. And exactly. after this, then after this, yeah, things are going to be strained with China. China's not going to lay down and take that. And I don't know how that ends. Look, I don't know how that ends. I do know this, and people don't want to hear this, we are not equipped for a hot war with China. We, they, and there's a lot that goes into that. I don't, I don't know if you want me to go into it. There's yeah, a lot hell that yeah, goes dude. into that. Don't, you don't, wait a minute. You don't want fat Reggie in the trench with you? <laughs> it's, not, it's not just the quality of the American male anymore, although that is severely lacking. It's not sure. the fact that we've taken every single effort to feminize and dumb down and weaken our military. It's not <laughs> that. Thank you. It's, Square it's, dancing. It's, it's the fact that China has, and we didn't, as this is all part of some treaty we signed with Russia, and China watched us do it. China has formed a ring that cannot be penetrated around their country in the South Pacific of, yes. of intermediate ballistic missiles, and they can sink an entire carrier group before we ever get into range. We cannot get to China. We do not have the physical capability of getting to China. Now, the good news is they can't get to us but we can't get there. It's not physically possible. What, Without it's, it's ICBMs. No, no, Without no, no. ICBMs. Well, no. It's as far as, as far as terrestrial terra firma, the U.S. You're right, but we have fleet everywhere throughout there. They can definitely touch some of our stuff, some of our equipment we have going on over there. Yeah, and we're floating around in there. Everywhere. Okinawa. I mean, we're South all over China there in the South Pacific. Pacific. Absolutely. And per what you're saying, you're absolutely correct. They're building bases. And let me know, because we've talked about this a lot on the show, going back to some of our first episodes, because I've been convinced of this kind of uh, at least presented East-West war. What are your thoughts on the one belt, one road policy, which is not just a road, it's a physical road, it is a rail route, it is a maritime route that that we're kind of afraid of over there. I mean, it's they're, they're building, like you said, like crazy. What are your thoughts on the one belt, one road, and how this plays into any of this, as far as globally? Well, there aren't there aren't there aren't thoughts to have on it. There's not a second there's not a second way to think about it. They're open about that's what they believe. Right. China has a plan, and they're open about this. They have a plan to take over as the number one superpower in the world by 2050. They even have a date on it. Right. And people do not understand. And I'm not saying they're way superior. I'm not. But people have to understand. China does not view war in the same way we do in the West. It is not a have to have it now, five years from now, six yes. months from now. I've got to let's get this thing done. They view all of this as a long term game, long term game, and they don't have to do. contend. Which that's what globalists do. Yeah. And you're right. And they don't have to contend with regime change. The bottom line is there's a chance Donald Trump is gone in November, where Xi Jinping is not gone in November. That's for Dagon Scherz. So right. can stay more consistent on a theme like that. There are advantages and disadvantages to every government system, but their strategy is not staying. They have inroads all over Africa, sucking yeah. all the resources yeah. out of Africa. Mozambique well, China, everywhere. And we've, we've talked about before is, you know, China to absorb you know, or nations that have such massive national debt to China for goods that have been sold to them, uh, China is taking in exchange for that debt, we'll just take over your ports. Yes. And they are. They're taking over ports worldwide. So, uh, I mean, it's it's a brilliant, a brilliant Well, they, they just got moved out of the, the port in Long Beach. Uh, it's probably been a few years now. But, again, they run the Trump's Panama Canal. Administration forced them to sell it. Yeah, they're the, but they still run the Panama Canal. They've uh, basically taken over through the mechanism, like you just said, a port in Sri Lanka. Um, but l let me ask you, piggybacking on all this China conversation, and again, this is the long game conversation, and like Pat just said, this is what globalists do. You and I, we all fight about scraps necessarily, moment to moment, where they're thinking 10, 20 years down the line. 
Is China the beta test of where we're going? Digital currency, the the Internet of Things, 5G, et cetera, social credit. I mean, I'm seeing it literally all over the Internet, and they always like to slow roll it you gotta out. you got to break that up, Jeff. you got to break well, that not up, for that. I mean, You're moving so fast for most people. But we've been talking about it literally almost every episode. China being sure. the beta test sure. for literally what you know what we're talking about here they they feigned the digital dollar and then pulled it back which i think they saw that wasn't going to quite play well in the united states they can't now roll out the one with gold but but they can't roll out the level of authoritarianism authoritarianism here in the u.s than they can with china it's going to be a little different but again what are your thoughts on 10 15 20 years from now us basically being china digital currency social credit etc I don't think we'll get there. Uh, uh, well, at least not as fast as they'll get there, at least not 10, 20 years from now. This is all... They're already because there. Our, so. everything, everything is a DNA thing with, with us. Well, with human beings in general. I mean, you take two... You know, you take some big, strong dude and some athletic woman, and, and they have a kid, and that kid's generally not going to turn out to be a scrawny little nerd. That's just the way DNA works. Nations have DNAs, too. And our DNA, by the grace of God, is rebellious that's who we are now we were seeing that weekend we're just see, we're seeing now how weak it can be but here in this country they tried to lock us down for what is it what are we going on a month right now months, yeah. already we have protests in the street for one month in china you could lock down that whole freaking place for a year and you wouldn't hear a peep because they'd just right. be going around shooting everybody well, and let me ask so, you to that well, point look, to that point look, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not saying we're impervious to it. I'm not saying that's never going to happen. And it, look, eventually all government only gets bigger. But I'm just saying it's got to be a lot slower burn here. Or you're going to freak people out. You're going to watch Texas to see. Well, as, as my good friend Sam Tripoli said, host of the Tinfoil Hat podcast, the Internet, I think, has gotten away from the globalists a little bit. Why? I mean, and I get it. The, the egregious um, impedance on our just basic constitutional human rights are just visceral we can all feel it but why now like i've said to my boy patrick they have been almost literally wiping their ass with the constitution for over 100 years man all these wars that we've had have been started off bullshit etc why now and going back to what we said like your your tweet man i loved your tweet like you know in 20, 2019 conservatives like xyz and then now they don't have that same energy that's been going on for a long time and i preface that to say, or to say i don't want people to start fighting and you know getting into violent shit i just want to, people to be intellectually honest and maybe be like i was wrong about not even just i was wrong but just kind of reevaluate their thought process so they're not so viscerally tribal and to to a certain degree where it just blinds them to shit going on right in front of them that like I get said in the beginning is just opposite of what they think is going on. So yeah, I'm sorry. I've hit you with a lot there. Why now? Why, why is everybody so patriotic now? Well, look, the truth of the matter is this one, everybody's scared. So they, so they hunker down, but two, and look, we don't, we, we don't like to talk about this, especially about our fellow countrymen or neighbors, but I see it in my neighborhood. I'm in the classic, you know, middle-class suburbia neighborhood here in Texas. You would think it'd be all, you know, come and take it flags everywhere. And that's what it was about a month ago. And then coronavirus breaks out and we've got the same old uh, suburban soccer mom tyrants yelling at everybody, yelling at teenagers for playing <laughs> basketball on the streets. The truth is, and look, it's an old saying. I didn't come up with it, but the truth is everybody wants to be a, paper, a patriot until it's time to do patriot stuff. Right. Man. Everybody wants to be a patriot when Barack Obama is president and you can put up a little funny meme on Twitter and get a couple snarks out of it. Nobody well, wants to be a patriot when the government's actually right. taking away your rights. Right. Speaking of patriots now, I'm going to go to Michigan in a second. But being a patriot, I'll say this. When someone at a grocery store or wherever the hell you are <clears throat> says, why are you not wearing a mask? Look at them and say, why the hell are you out here if you're concerned with that? Right. Go back home. Stay home. Have them deliver your groceries and shut your mouth. Okay, um, I already had it. My kids already had it. My wife had it. My crew had it. Uh, my brother had it. Uh, we've all had it. We had it in mid January. Uh, my my lungs sounded like two bowls of of bubbling soup, and I had violent shakes for two to three days. So I I, I know I had it. And I'll bet anyone out there a hundred dollar bill. I don't care if it's 
you know, 10 people that want want to bet me a hundred dollar bill that my my uh, antibodies will show that I've had it. Uh, my kids have had it, all of them. So, you know that that is what it is. But let's talk about patriotism. Let's talk about the upcoming demonstrations in Michigan. Michigan, the citizens are about ready to blow the hell up. The governor there has restricted and stopped the sale of even seeds for your garden vegetables. <laughs> Let's talk about that in terms of freedom. Oh, Definitely. sorry, we tossed that to me, Pat. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, this is see, this is what actually gives me hope. This part that bummed you guys out gives me hope because they overstepped their bounds. In America, freaked. They showed yeah, their the cards. Is what they did. The they showed their cards. Yeah, that's exactly right. The governor of Michigan went way too far. Banned people from buying gardening seeds. Banned people from traveling in between their own homes that they own. Yeah. You're not even allowed to drive across town if you happen to own a second home. And what they did was, like the left always does, they bit off more than they can chew. Their eyes got too big, they got drunk on power, and they took it too far and woke people up. This is where Obama screwed up all the time. I've, I've said this for a long time, and I'm happy to admit that I'm a Republican, well, kind of a libertarian Republican type, but re the best thing in the world for the left, for people who want what the left wants, is for Republicans to be in power. Because Republicans will give them all the things that they want, but they'll give it to them much slower in a way that the American people can swallow more easily. But the leftists get in power, and since they're a bunch of five-year-old children, commies, they don't understand how to control themselves. And so you get Barack Obama has all the power in the world for the first two years, passes Obamacare, which the whole country hates, and he loses all the power so he can't have any more power ever again. The best thing for the left is Republican rule. But does it matter if it's a slow roll communism or an immediate communism? It's still fucking communism, dude. Well, like, yes, it matters. It's, it's a slow roll. I'd rather have it a hundred years from now than tomorrow. Well, if you if you specify the time frame, yeah. I mean, I guess. But I mean, again, it well, goes. Look, but it, no, it goes. It goes. No, hold on, hold look, on. You, Jeff, are you saying you want warning, fair warning, so we can load our weapons? No, I'm just saying, please don't let, like I said to you the other day, these guys seemingly benevolent gestures to to obfuscate their more, more, way more malevolent intentions that are just as bad as the people we demonized as the left. Well, it's, the, the, it's the, the same the, fucking the thing. Truth is the, biggest, the biggest divide in the country is not left versus right, although that's a humongous divide. Of course. The biggest divide is, is the New York, C, New York City, D.C. corridor and the rest of the nation. That is the biggest divide. You are either in that club or you are out of that club. And the truth is that Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter that they're in the club. They're all in that D.C. corridor. They move seamlessly right from Congress to the Senate to back out being a lobbyist making a million a year into the newsroom of, of, of NBC and back on the campaign trail again. Man, the biggest divide in America, to be honest with you, is those that believe the box on the wall is an authoritarian or the the no all-knowing the all-knowing, all-knowledgeable individual giving them the truth and the people like us who are saying bullshit, this is not the truth. Um, you know, I, I mean, it's it's literally like the retards versus those who understand the Constitution. Yeah, well, that's the thing. People don't understand the Constitution. Or like I was talking about earlier, Pat, they... They like, to, they like to talk about it, and I've seen this from my friends on the right, especially over the past month. They love to talk about it. They love to bring it up anytime someone brings up taxes or, or yeah. spending or things. Well, the Constitution this and Constitution that, and you can't do this, and that's a violation of the First Amendment, but the government orders people inside of their homes and orders businesses <laughs> to close, and they're out here screaming at me in my inbox for the last month telling me to shut up that I'm trying to get people killed. It would just, and that's, I mean, yes, man. And it's just, yes, it's yes. You know what? Honestly, Jesse, we are trying to get people killed. People that would have died from the flu, people that would have died from pneumonia would have died from this, right? Am I correct? For the most part, yeah. That's, that's not 100%. Okay, so, so yeah. We've established that. That's, uh, look, as cold as that sounds, yes, I'm an asshole right now. But let's be honest. Uh, no other pandemic... 
Um, and in terms of pandemics, this is a midget compared to the, well, let's go back to the top 10 pandemics in history um, would have killed 1 million at least by this time. We're just over 100,000 right now. Nobody ever shut down an, an entire Western society, and I, I don't even know how to explain it, but we're talking about anywhere between 1 million in one year to 200 million people in five years for pandemics, but yet we're shutting everything down. It, well, and that's what I, that's what we've said. Not, I think everyone has finally surmised the numbers. Even two weeks ago, they were working on that fear aspect, and people were freaking out, and people still are. But even again, your layperson, you and I, Jesse, the number is none of it's making sense. None of it's making sense to even just the layperson. The the, the guy we're gonna have on tomorrow, um, um, uh, Garrett Soldano, he organized uh, Michiganers against excessive quarantine. The, I mean, the page blew up. It's almost at half a million now, and they just started the other day. And we're gonna have him on tomorrow just to talk about the pushback that's going on, which is absolutely necessary because none of this, none of this makes sense anymore. You know, the models that they had, everyone's going to die. I mean, literally, I, I unfortunately, because I'm working from home and research the show, they went from 100,000 people going to die to the next day, 250,000, to like two days later. Oh, shit. We're plateauing off, man. We're looking at way less than that. And they've used that to necessitate, like Pat said, we've all said, a global, not just the United States, a global shutdown. And I think, again, this goes so far beyond right, left. These guys have planned for this forever. We're about to see what they've talked about. Look it up. I can't. I mean, the Internet of Things, 5G, the smart grid, Agenda 21. Things are about to change. The reset is more than just financial. It's just it's financial, political, social. Can't go back to how it was, man. Just like after 9-11, we'll be like, man, remember before 9-11? We're going to be like, remember before Corona? Wasn't that dope? I can tell you that American citizens better march on their state capitals and their city capitals, their city halls, and take them back. Who shot Biggie Smalls and we don't get them, they going to get us all. Sorry. But the pushback, though. <laughs> look, I mean, look you, nailed, you nailed it, Jeff, when, when you said, look, look, everything has changed. I, I don't know. I don't have all the answers right now, but I, I, I too, I can see with my own eyes, and that's why I feel like I've been living in the twilight zone. Our <laughs> response to this is so grossly, grossly not proportional to what the actual pandemic is. Yes. And you see people screaming about their rights finally, and you see economies downturning. I saw economic numbers today, just out of Europe, not ours, about how their economies are going to contract five, six, seven, eight, nine percent. That is a global shift. We are seeing everything shift, and you are 100% right. We are going to talk about, do you remember how it was before coronavirus? Damn and sure. what's so stunning about that, and this sounds cold-hearted and it sounds mean, but what's stunning about that is for 100,000 people worldwide, yeah. we changed everything for 100,000 people worldwide? That that is just that shows you what an overly emotional social media society we truly well, live in. Well, and, and what we've talked about, and as Pat has enumerated all the different deaths from other uh, pandemics, history is not going to treat us well because they're going to be like, "Wow, these numbers don't even kind of match up." Not only are they finding it out now, they're going to be saying it hundred years from now. The greatest economy, the greatest country in the world. Someone sent me a message the other day from over across the seas because we got people all over the goddamn where. But they're like, "Hey, didn't you guys have a revolution against taxes and?" Here you are locked down over a virus that's doing, I'm not saying nothing, but. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah. If, if people think that we're, uh, our deep state is not in lockstep with China, um, they're fooling themselves. Yeah. Right. Um, China has been the proving ground for the, the social uh, credit system. And if people want to look it up on Wikipedia, uh, they're more than welcome to look it up. And, and here's the thing is that's. It's a national reputation system being delivered and developed by Chinese government. The program initiated regional trials as far back as 2009 before launching a national pilot with eight credit scoring firms in 2014. Uh, this whole thing is centralized under the People's Bank of China with participation with eight different firms. By 2020, it is intended to standardize an assessment of citizens and business, economic, and social repu 
expectations hmm. for social credit. The social credit initiative calls for the establishment of unified record systems for individuals, businesses, and the government to be tracked and tracked, tracked, yeah, and evaluated for trustworthiness. <laughs> and this suggests if you jaywalk. the system utilizes numerical score as the reward and punishment mechanism. Exactly. So you are going to be monitored by your government. This is a UN um, program that they have uh, put in place where if, as Jeff has said, if you jaywalk, get a speeding ticket, do anything against the law, uh, get in a fight in a bar, do anything stupid, uh, you can no longer get on a plane and travel. You can no longer get on a bus or the subway system. And uh, your life is well. You're on lockdown, bro. Well, and I so, think, and I think that's going to be. You want a, that in America? That's going to be. And there you go. That's the question, champ. That's going to be a huge provision to how we open up now. What you can't? You didn't get this. Your kid didn't get this. Oh, you can't come back to public school. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, no, you can't come to this concert. You can't come to this football game. And that's exactly where we're headed, you guys. And I firmly, firmly believe that. I know it might sound well. It, it, that's the thing anymore. You know, people are very hesitant to conspiracy farm or whatever. We're not always right, but we've been proven very correct on a lot of things because we just have an alternative view of history that proven to be correct. So when something like Jeff, this happens, Jeff, and the things, can, Jeff, can you can you find something we've been proven wrong on? We we have Q. You like Q? It's wrong. It's not real. But I'm just saying. Oh, is oh, it, oh, is ever, it not? None of it. Some of it has been real. Well, yeah. Q's not, there's no, yeah, Q's not real. So I'm just saying. Um, we, <laughs> you can't say that. Of course you I can. can't. You just don't want to, you that. just don't want to believe that it. That could be your opinion, Jeff. Okay. Well, we'll see. We will see, Chad. I'm not, I'm not saying that is my opinion. What I'm saying oh, is. It is. It is. You Q's love saying, Q. You whoa, love whoa. Q. Stop. Stop. <laughs> you, you saying Q is wrong uh, is your opinion. It is my opinion, and it will only be proven fact once it proves proves out. But that's what we call hope porn. But you know, we all fall for it sometimes. But not, not, fine, that's fine. But it, it some, it's some, opinion. Some, some some kids put a, a tooth under their pillow and hope their tooth fairy comes and gives them a dollar too. And you know, it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, but it's not for adults, right? Talk to our host. Talk to our our our, our guest. I should say. Yeah, I am talking. About, you're familiar with. Are you familiar with Q? I, I'm actually not familiar with Q. Good it's one of those things that I've I've heard it a million different times. I've never gave enough of a crap about it to look into it. With all due respect to Pat, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is or I'm what it's supposed hurt, to be. I'm deeply hurt, actually. Now I'm deeply hurt. <laughs> Just everyone don't, play this back me, when Pat. it's proven to be horseshit. Just everyone play it. Play this back to Pat so we can go to sleep at night like an AF, ASMR video. <laughs> No, but seriously, though, I mean, I just think, again, all of this, I mean, I, I, I'm going to let you slide, man, because we've kept you for a little bit too long. But I think, I, I, man, Pat, this we didn't fight at all. I love this guy, man. We, we agree so much more than we do differ. I mean, great. If you like Trump, that's fine. But what you've expressed is you understand the larger stuff at play, that none of this makes sense. Whomever you believe is you know, the going to be the next president, right, left, this goes so far beyond that. And I think you get that. And I'm wondering, man. Long term, Patrick, and you hit me up too, man. What long term? What are we looking at here in the next two, three weeks? If they extend it past the May deadline, they start shutting down food supply lines. What are we looking at? Because we've Pat and I have talked about it many times over these last months that we've been really grinding this out during this pandemic. Bellies are getting empty. ATMs, you know, bank Go accounts ahead. are getting empty. Look at what they're doing to people Go with ahead, full. Be- Look at what they're doing to people with full bellies, etc. And we're we're slowly starting to see. The news tightening, if you will. What do you see long term, bro? Are we going to come back from this here in a few weeks and be fine? Or what do you see? Well, no, one, we won't be fine. I, I find uh, people who say these things about bounce right back have never run a business before. The <laughs> truth is we, we're going to eliminate a whole lot of small businesses, even if we open by May 1st. And probably 25, 30 percent of the ones we eliminated are never coming back ever. And so yeah. those people, not only have you taken away their business, you've carpet bombed their credit so they can't get another small business ro- loan for a decade while they build their credit back up. Yeah. So you have 
you have irreversibly destroyed the economy in very bad ways. That's if we open up on May 1st. If we don't open up on May 1st, that's a whole nother can of worms we can get into. I, I, I genuinely think this, and this is obviously the last thing in the world I would ever want. If we do not open up by May 1st, you are going to start seeing pockets, not a big wave. Yeah. You're going to start seeing pockets of violence. When you have 30 or 40 million Americans out of work, think how many drugged out losers that is, people who were already desperate, suicidal. You're going to have workplace shootings. You're going to have really, really like the worst stuff you can possibly imagine. People have to understand that, des that depressions have casualties too, and they have a lot of them. Is that why the military is there on the grounds right now? You think, or is that uh, just to facilitate I, yeah, supply? The because we know they're there. Is obviously. You'd have no other reason than to bring in so much National Guard and so much of that. Obviously, that is. You always have to be concerned. And I don't even blame them for this, to be honest with you. As a federal government, you have to be concerned about civil unrest yeah. when you're trying to lock down a population. And let me tell you, they're going to get it. They, they are going to get it if they keep the, the population locked down for too long. There are too many desperate people out there right now. Gosh. And it's yeah, always just beginning. He, he's, he's spot on. And I'll just say this, if if Trump, this will be the defining moment of Trump's presidency, if if he does, which he's already done, roll the Fed into the Treasury, which makes Mnuchin, uh, what, the boss of, of all of it, and then Trump oversees that. So Trump's now in control of that. Has he done a preemptive measure to kill the Federal Reserve. That's what I'm thinking because he has hinted before that he's going to kill the Federal Reserve. And uh, So BlackRock being brought in as an investment banker for the Treasury means nothing. Look, dude, Deep well, State, no Goldman what, Sachs, no World what. Bank, Federal Reserve Vice Chairman. Sure, it's sure. You, you can doubt all you want, but I'm saying, look, this is, as you call, hope porn. <laughs> but Trump made a preemptive measure to roll the Federal Reserve into the Treasury, and now it's under his control. He has alluded to the fact in the Federal Reserve, this is a smart move if you're going to kill the Federal Reserve. Andrew Jackson is the only president, mind you, who was capable of completing and killing the central bank in United States history. They tried to kill him. Both flintlock pistols misfired. Uh, the guy that his assassin um, uh, did not su succeed because of that. Um, Lincoln hated the central bank, wanted to kill the central bank, was assassinated because of it. Kennedy was assassinated, big part, um, because of it. Trump yeah. will be, at least attempts on his life, will come um, without a doubt. And you can mark my words on that. But he's already positioned himself as the boss of the Federal Reserve by rolling it into the Treasury to kill it, okay? So let's keep that in mind. Call it hope porn again, Jeff. As, it's not even hope porn. Just look at BlackRock. I mean, it's, again, you can't drain the swamp by surrounding yourself with swamp. Again, you've already stated that. You've already stated that. But I will say this. Um, we will know. This is the measuring stick on who Trump is, whether he is he is who he says he is, or he is not. If he does not kill the Federal Reserve, then we know he is not who he said he was. If he kills the Federal Reserve, then we know he is the white hat he has expressed himself as. And that's all I'm saying. That yeah, is the measuring stick. That's your Everyone measuring stick. Go off of that. That's you your measuring stick. Me. You, can, you can say anything you want, but that is the measuring stick that, that tells us whether Trump is who that he tells said you his was. State Department cleared Hillary Clinton of the email stuff. His DOJ is expanding arrest powers. I don't care what you're saying. I don't give give any example you want. It doesn't. Oh, matter. see that. Okay, so we look, got the, the cognitive Kennedy dissonance family, going on with the champ. The Kennedy family made look. The Kennedy family made its its billions off selling booze during the friggin' prohibition period. Of course, it didn't make them bad people. It made them smart business people, and so in, in the end. 
uh, Kennedy wanted to friggin' do the right thing for the American people, and he got killed well, for it. It was way so more than what he was doing with the Treasury. Split hairs with me, bro. No, no, no. He got killed for way more than that. But no, that's cool, bro. And like I said, we all have to you be responsible. Saying, you know what I'm saying. I do, I do. But we all we all have to be responsible for our choices. Like I've said, even though the threat is, the, the, the man has done literally almost nothing to prove other than some cosmetic bullshit. He, sur- I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sounding redundant. He surrounded himself with swamp by people, and people are saying, while he's just gone straight freaking fascist takeover saying, no, he's still got our best interest in mind. And again, we're all adults and we have to be all be responsible for our choices. And I but hope you're right. Way, I the, hope you're all right. The, all the things that you've thrown in, either way, all the things that you have thrown into the mix of the point that I'm trying to make, I want you to clarify with me. Clarify. If Trump kills the Federal Reserve, he is who he said he was. If he does not kill the Federal Reserve, he is not who he said he was. Am I correct? No, I mean, kill the Federal Reserve. What does that mean? If you just transfer power from the Federal Reserve to your cronies and, you know, your your global whoa, bankers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. The killing the Federal Reserve stops the issuing of money uh, with interest to the American people, which which keeps us enslaved, my friend. So let's let's clarify that. Let's be very clear. But that's what I'm saying. You're, um, you didn't put a bunch dissolving, of... Dissolving... That's, that's bro, right, bro, right. bro, whoa, whoa, whoa. Does, uh, now, I feel strongly about this. I'm sure you do. Dissolving the Federal Reserve and creating a gold-backed Treasury note with no fucking interest on it releases the American people from fucking slavery. You, you, you understand I that. I understand that, but I he's not going to do that. He's, going, he's not going to do that. He's going to facilitate us moving into digital slavery and the, everything will we've he, talked about. Will he? Will, but I'm just saying... Bro, if if he does what I say he's going to do potentially, will he be the guy that he said he was? I don't believe that. No, I, I don't think that one hey, cause again as long one cause makes true. And you go on record not believing it. Of course. So if he kills the Federal Reserve and creates a gold backed Treasury note and relieves the American people of interest loaned money from global bankers yeah that it's, i was the one who was right yeah for me it's not being right and it's not so binary like that when you sign legislation while this is going on to expedite 5d 5g installation when you surround yourself with swamp people when your state department clears hillary clinton for the clear egregious shit from from uh the email thing i mean come on the list is he's just not who he says he is dude i mean again it doesn't even matter sure we sure, have a guest sure. here we have a guest I'm, here I'm, let's stick to Let's stick to the nuts and bolts of of my point of killing the Federal Reserve or not killing the Federal Reserve and uh, relieving the American people of paying interest to globalist bankers who are aren't are not even American citizens. What do you think about that, Jesse? I don't have any idea what Pat's talking about. (laughs) (laughs) so you you, jesse jesse you understand the history of the federal reserve i do look i do and the truth is as soon as we a lot of people make a convincing argument as soon as we started printing unbacked money that was the beginning of the end of the united states of america yes i would argue it's as soon as the 19th amendment passed but to each his own 1913, right. the creation of the Federal Reserve Act. That, that was definitely the beginning of the end. Nixon taking us off the gold standard. And even when you get with gold, it's not like gold can't be manipulated. That's almost part of the reason why, you know, whatever. The precious metals in that whole market can be easily manipulated just as much as fiat currency. But, you know, again, this is so beautiful about this frap and show. We get to just, you know, compare notes. We might be wrong. We might be right. It's just cool conversations that we probably would normally have in a bar or around a fire or whatever. At the end of the day, Patrick J. Militich, and I know my boy Jesse, and I know myself, we just want the best for every single person. We want the best for our kids. We don't want government involvement. Tell them we're going to fucking, we're going to get arrested for t-balling with our daughter or can't sit on a park bench. What's the solution, Jeff? Awareness, dude. Awareness. Like we've said, man, I, I'm, I may not be the person boots on the ground, front of the line or whatever, but unless you recognize there's a problem, you won't be having any change to the problem. So you at least from an information intellectual standpoint have to recognize something is up in order for you to change the behavior. Being informed and then action. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. What type of action? Well, that's up to every individual, right? You know, you can run for office. You could, you know... It's a different path for everybody. Vote. Vote. Run for office. You can do that. Absolutely. March on your capital. Create a revolution. But none of it starts with at least recognizing that light, that switch flipping. Something's up. 
I've been lied to. This is bullshit. Unfortunately, and sure. fortunately for me, it happened as a 16 year old kid when I was watching these documentaries on JFK. I'm like, God damn, they killed our president in broad daylight sitting next to his girl under dubious circumstances. That hit me a lot, man. And for me, that was, right. that was what it was for me. Pat, I know yours was the Albion hanging out with your, your grandma trying to get money out of a bank and long lines. Um, I don't know exactly what it was right. for you, Jesse, but you know, we've all, we're all doing what we're doing, not because we just, for our own edification, man, we love liberty, we love humanity, and we want to see more of it. And what we're seeing now is the complete freaking opposite. And as much as they can piss on your back and say it's rain, we fucking have had enough of this shit. Jesse? Yeah, I've been blowing a gasket for about a month now. I've lost about half the friends I've ever had, and I'm going to keep losing them because screw everybody. This is communism. Well, the, the, look, those friends aren't aren't aware of the Constitution. They've never read it. They don't understand it. And when things get ugly, because look, let's be honest, um, sitting our asses at home isn't the ugly part. What the ugly part is the six to ten to twelve trillion digital dollars that get injected into the economy <laughs> out of nowhere. Um, another QE program. Yeah. That causes a loaf of bread to cost a hundred dollars, and that's what's going to be ultimately what wakes the American people up. That hyperinflation, that the American dollar is now worthless. We can't even buy stuff from China, even if we wanted to, and it's going to take a generation. It will literally take an entire generation to rebuild manufacturing in this country, and ninety-five percent, ninety-five percent of all of our farmers are manufactured in China. That dependency alone, diabetes medicine, psychotropic, or uh, uh, all, all the all the medicines that that people take for depression, it'd probably be a great thing if if we run out of those and people would just take uh, CBD and THC and and uh, hemp products, and we'd we'd probably cure all the mental illness in this fucking country. Well, there's no no money in the cure, champ. There's no money in the cure. Almost like what we're talking about here. There's no money in keeping people really informed, and they got to keep the divide going. Jesse, shout out to where we can uh, track you down, dude. And honestly, we I say this to all of our shows we've had this last couple months. Come back on here in about six or eight weeks as things have kind of progressed down the line. We'll compare our notes of what's going on and um, just kind of see where we're at. Do a little debrief. Uh, what do you think? Oh, uh, absolutely. Count me in, fellas, anytime you need me. Well, any social networking, where can we track you down, brother? You can everybody can find me on Twitter at Jesse Kelly DC or I have a website Jesse Kelly Show. I got a radio show, TV show. Enjoy it all, y'all, and I'll be around. Now, how do you spell Jesse? J e s s e k e l l y. Jesse Kelly DC. There you go. Very sweet. I thank you so much for your time, my friend. I know we are living in crazy times, and I definitely appreciate your insight, Pat. Another score. You know, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, great show. Great show. Jesse, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Be good, fellas. Absolutely. Peace and so much love, you guys. Love you, champ. Stay tuned, you guys. There will always be more.